coming up on today's show. The papers that we're talking about, actually, you need to make sure you take care of way before you pass away. But some of those papers are creating a living will so that should you become incapacitated for any reason, your family knows what your wishes are. You know, the estate attorneys, you know, they don't necessarily want to uh, come in and help you organize your files. They want to, you know, get the right documents put together. So I think the clear thing is to have a clear organizing system. Um, If you are a paper person, which, you know, for these type of documents, I think it's important to be, have a copy and paper. The most important papers in your life and how to organize them. Today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today we're gonna talk about a subject that some people don't like to talk about so much, but what's really important about it is the papers that go along with that. And that is end of life issues, estate planning, and all those important documents that you store Uh, but that other people need to access at the time after your death. We have Kim Oser on with us uh, back again in season two here. Uh, We're in go month now for NAPO and uh, trying to get people motivated about organizing everything. But, you know, this topic of estate planning documents and those documents that you're leaving behind for other people, it kind of is not so much fun to talk about, but uh, it's real important, isn't it? It sure is. It's probably the most important papers you have in your life. All right. So let's let's get to the the, the very basics of this. Um, let's first maybe define what some of those important papers are, because, you know, there's a lot of different documents. And I know you're not an estate planning attorney or any of that, and we'll throw that disclaimer out here right away. But let's talk, we're really talking about how to organize those so that in, in the event that you do pass away, someone can find those. So what kind of papers are we talking about? Sure. Um, The papers that we're talking about, actually, you need to make sure you take care of way before you pass away. But some of those papers are creating a living will so that should you become incapacitated for any reason, your family knows what your wishes are. So it gives them or the medical uh, physicians, the healthcare facilities, your wishes so that they can act on your behalf. Some of the other papers are a power of attorney which allows other people to um, make phone calls for you as well as access bank accounts and do correspondence on your behalf. uh, So that again, if you become incapacitated, there's someone who you've chosen that's appointed for that. If you have a living will so that people know what your wishes are for, uh, I mean, excuse me, a will, a last will and testament so they know what your wishes are for once you do pass away. Also, what happens to your tangible property? Where does the house go? Where does the car go? And if you have um, money in an estate, who gets that money? Where does the money go? How much goes to charity? So uh, these are all just like some of those unfortunate death and dying papers uh, that people don't like to talk about. But it's so important that we have these in addition to all the rest of the paperwork, you know, the the things that everybody has, auto insurance, uh, homeowners insurance, your bank accounts, your credit cards. Who are those vendors? Right. Well, and I suppose too the uh, you know the estate attorneys you know they don't necessarily want to uh, come in and help you organize your files. They want to you know get the right documents put together. So uh, when you work with clients, you're probably working with clients that either have these done or maybe you're referring them out. And then once they get them done, they're bringing back to you to help them get them organized in a way. So what are some of the common ways? And I know there's probably not just one way to organize or store these. What are some of the ways that you've seen that people have have set this up so that it, they're easy to find? I think the clear thing is to have a clear organizing system. Um, if you are a paper person, which you know, for these type of documents, I think it's important to be have a copy in paper. Some people keep it in a safety deposit box. Other people keep it a copy of it in their home or in a fireproof safe. But I think the key is having it clearly labeled what it is. And the second key is making sure that someone knows how to access it and where to find it. Right. Should they get into that situation? What, what, what do you think is the best way that you've seen that someone knows? Do they just tell the their next of kin or tell a few people? Or is it better to, you know, have a, in case of emergency, open this envelope? I mean, uh, what what are the, the, the good ways for people to, if someone was going to go look for a document, where should they look first? Well, they're, they're, the first 
thing is letting people know where it is. Okay. But there are, there are forms, and I have a form on my website that allows you to indicate where things are stored. So at the top, you put the different locations that they're stored. And the bottom, it has the different important documents, and you check off the location that they're stored. And you can give this to the people that it matters to. Only certain people have access to some of those locations. But you can give it to the people that would need this information, you know, should you become incapacitated or anything. This form, a similar form came to me, and that's why I created my own, when my parents were traveling out of the country. Mm -hmm. And they basically were going to be gone for almost eight weeks, and they wanted me to know, heaven forbid, something happens, where to get everything, where to get the information, who to call first. Right. Because the estate attorney created the documents, and they may not have copies of all the other documents that are referred to right. in some of those documents. Right. So my parents gave this to me, and I've held on to it. It's about five years old. I told my dad he needs to do an update. But uh, Yeah, that's a whole other least... topic of people who, you know, they start out, they have a couple kids, and then, you know, their family's life changes or whatever, and they don't go and update that. But that's a whole other discussion for another uh, right. podcast. <laughs> sure, sure. So, uh, But I mean, it's... The, the, the key is just letting someone know where it is and giving them access to it. You know, for example, a safety deposit box. You need a key to get into a safety deposit box. And for years, I knew where my parents stored their key. And when they went away, I said, so I just go to the bank and I bring the key? And they said, no, you need to be a signer on the box. I said, well, then why do I have know where the key is? It doesn't matter if I'm not a signer on the box. So we went to the bank and they added someone other than the two of them to their box so that somebody else could have access. And it didn't go end up in the state. God forbid something should happen. Now, do you see a lot of uh, documents going digital where there really isn't a paper copy? I mean, I, I don't know, again, the legalities of all that. I mean, I'm sure you know lawyers like to print out lots of paper, but and we like it when people use paper. But uh, are, are there some documents now that are just all digital or that don't necessarily need to be printed out? There are th most of the documents you can have a digital copy, and I I encourage people to keep a digital copy somewhere on a safe server with a strong pa password so that no one else has access to it. Because clearly, some of this information is no one's business until after you're gone. But um, I do encourage people to keep a secure copy online somewhere on storage, or you know, if they keep it on an external hard drive, that someone knows where that is and if it's password protected. But there, most of the documentation you are able to uh, store online in a digital copy is okay, with the exception sometimes of a death certificate. And again, this is after someone's passed away. Right. It's, I encourage you to get a couple of copies of the death certificate because there are some institutions that will only accept an original right. death certificate. They won't accept the digital copy. Right. So I, now this, uh, again, seems to be... Uh, part of the planning process and, and do you have any like horror stories of people maybe who didn't quite get it organized and you've spent time and energy trying to locate documents and maybe they didn't tell their next of kin and and if you did how did you end up resolving that situation well the the yes it unfortunately happens a lot because again this is something we don't talk about we don't share and it does happen a lot and what typically happens is when you don't know where the papers are is the state will freeze everything hmm. and they'll yeah. take control and then you've got to pay attorneys to help get through probate and to figure it all out and to map it out and that's why the uh, discussing the topic while you're alive and well is so important and taking care of it you know it, it, it does cost money to have attorneys write up some of these documents for you right. and there are some online versions which you can either get for free or for a low fee but the importance of doing it the investment that you're paying up front I say estate planning and letting your family know what your wishes are and where your belongings are is the best gift you could give them because it's misery should you not give them access to this information should you become incapacitated or die because right. then they're forced to fight it all and to do it all. So it does get caught up in the state. Some of the property goes unclaimed and ends up in that guide that you get of unclaimed property. You have to have documentation to prove it's rightfully yours or rightfully to the states right. should someone pass away unexpectedly now do you uh, uh on your on the checklist that you talked about there that's on your website that's uh, needanotheru.com does that checklist have uh more than just which documents does it say you know make sure such and such a person knows about it, or you have two or three people that know about 
the locations, I mean, kind of like the procedures versus just the uh, items that you need to make sure people know about? This form doesn't, but you just gave me work to do. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that out to you. Right. So I, I'll get you a sort of a, a roadmap right. that when you get to the situation, where to go first. You know, I mean, it, one of the most important things I hate to say is to contact Social Security Administration. Right. Because there's there becomes a lot of fraud. There are unfortunately are people that are unethical and scrupulous, and they will search the death notices and try to create new personas and right. steal money. Right. So, yeah, it's important to let them know. We don't like that. Um, so no. we're going to take a quick little break here. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about um, you know some of the steps that people use, and maybe some of the people uh, in their family, because I know y y there's usually uh, 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 the person who oversees the estate, but that's not necessarily the person that needs all the particular documents. So uh, we'll get into that in a moment. We're with Kim Ozer from needanotheru.com, and we'll be right back. Are you looking to get your office organized but don't know where to start? And what can you really do to keep your office organized? Smead has put together a new ebook to help you answer these exact questions. We've compiled the best tips from professional organizers around the country to help you tackle the most common office organizing challenges. Go to smead.com slash office organization and get your free copy today. That's smead.com forward slash office organization. The new organization for the office ebook from Smead, keeping you organized. We are back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about end-of-life documents and not necessarily how to prepare them, but how to organize them and how to uh, make sure that the right people know where they are. So in the event of your passing, uh, you can the person taking charge of your estate will be able to uh, find the documents they need and, and make the process a lot smoother. Uh, we're with Kim Oser from uh, needanotheru.com, a certified professional organizer, not an attorney. We, we say that. We want to make sure there's disclaimer here. We're not giving legal advice, but we are talking about just the organization and, and how, you know, who needs to know what, when, and, and there's probably a lot of different situations. But Kim, you know, if I were coming into you and uh, I had a couple things, like I had a, a will and a few other documents, uh, I know you have that checklist on your website, uh, but what kinds of people should I be telling uh, about where my important documents are? Obviously, your family, um, if you have children, your children, maybe a sibling of yours, uh, so that they know um, anyone who has direct relationship to it. So, for example, like one of the people that would be important to let know is an accountant. Huh. Because that, they come in, you know, the, the taxes on what happens when you pass away, who pays them, what are they, and what's what are the ramifications of the money that might go into an estate? How's that tax? So an accountant would be on that list as well. Uh, a financial planner, if you have an IRA or anything that's in a financial account that they would know as well and so that the account numbers would be transferred for whatever's in the estate. So uh, you also yeah. might want to let us, an unbiased party that's, you know, maybe a friend, a close friend of the family, but isn't necessarily your children because they might not have the personal interest that your children would have as well as the emotions that your children would have when all this documentation is read. Well, and, and, and one I think is probably just the, your insurance policy. If you have an insurance, insurance policy on you, you know, who that agent is. And, you know, I've heard uh, people say, well, you know, if you just collect everybody's mail for 30 days, you'll probably see all their activity, but it's not necessarily that easy. And there's probably requirements in order to cash in on an insurance policy of certain things that have to be in place. Um, do you have any tips on, uh, you know, so let's say someone's passed away, they've got the documents on some of the real important things you need to do right away in order to kind of start moving to, to administer an estate? Sure. Uh, one of the things, and again, I'm not an attorney and I'm right. not an accountant, but one of the things that I would make sure if it's a joint account to make sure that you have some cash for yourself to pay okay. for expenses that when you have right away, because the banks, you know, the financial institutions may freeze things. But you would need to change your account. So it's any sort of banking institutions, credit cards, uh, financial, like the big Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo type banks that do the financial planning. Um, 
any auto insurance because you certainly don't want to be paying auto insurance of someone who's no longer driving mm -hmm. uh, if they're if it's a apartment rental or a home that there's uh, a, a homeowners insurance or a renters insurance uh, your secondary insurance your primary insurance is usually going to find out from the hospital or whoever might do it but your secondary insurance if you have a secondary insurance plan you certainly don't want to be paying them and you know the the tricky thing like you said is if you watch someone's mail it's not that easy anymore because we get so much online right but to, but a, a key would be to look at a credit card mm -hmm. so if you look at the credit card all those things that are on auto pay that you would see that things that are billed quarterly or things that are billed monthly so all those institutions that um, really handle that, you also need to look to see, you know, you've got a pension from a previous employer or a current employer. Uh, there's the, the life insurance I think you mentioned. Um, there's, let's see, there's just a whole host. Auto, uh, I'm trying to think, I have some notes, let's see. Um, Social Security, which I mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have multiple life insurance policies. A recent client I found after the client had passed away, his wife and I were going through papers, and we found almost a $90,000 life insurance policy from the VA. Hmm. Now, again, they required a birth certificate. So we were able to provide them a birth certificate, a birth certificate, a, pardon me, a death certificate. Death certificate, yeah. Yeah, sorry. But um, that we were able to provide them the death certificate to prove that this person was indeed no longer with us. Right. Well, now, have you ever had the situation, uh, or do you recommend this, where uh, you know the older person uh, picks somebody and gets the younger person together, and you meet with uh, both parties so that you know there's kind of this three-way thing going on where things need to know, or do you just tell them, you know, go meet with them on the side, you know, and uh, report back to me? I don't think having an extra person there is a bad thing because, again, this is this is a hard topic right. to discuss, and I think you know, our mind starts to spin and we're not necessarily hearing what's being told to us or what's being said. And so having someone who's not emotionally attached with you as a third party to sort of ask those questions that you might not be thinking of and also take notes for you so you have an idea of what's really being said and can interpret for you later. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, a lot of people probably don't like, first of all, they don't want to talk about this, but then they, you know, maybe there is a life triggering event like, you know, just got some bad news from the doctor or whatever. But, uh, you know, maybe something like uh, if you are going to downsize or move and you have to go through stuff anyway, that might be a good opportunity uh, to say, hey, let's get this in place. Do you, do you agree on that? I absolutely agree. And this is the perfect time with it being January, a fresh start, get organized month. It's a time, you know, every year we turn a year older, so it's the beginning of the year, so another year is going to pass. And again, you know, this might not necessarily be a person who's advanced in age. Right. You know, it could happen, if you have a family, it could happen to anybody. And if you have a family, you need to make sure your family's taken care of. Right. Yeah. Now, do, do you have uh, any... Um like services that people use that help them go through? I mean, uh, you know, in this, these days of apps, you know, there's probably an estate planning app or something out there that helps you do this maybe digitally uh, alongside your regular uh, paper files, or have you run into any uh, service like that that helps you kind of go through this process? Uh, online, there's a lot of the banks offer it, and um, there's, there's a lot of content online when you search estate planning because a lot of the attorneys or um, accountants that work in estate planning, that they will have online information as well that there's you can put stuff into. Just make sure that it's secure and that your information is secure um, and you're not being putting your stuff into a scrupulous site. Mm -hmm. So, but there there is a there is a ton of information online. Um, I really advise if, if someone needs some help is to, to ask for help, to get some help. And that's how I got brought into it for a couple of my clients was they said, who's supposed to do this if you don't? Because going through it, you don't think of it. Right. And, you know, fortunately for my situation, my client and their family, they had these papers. They just weren't organized. That was the first job I was to do was get those papers for their estate organized. Right. And unfortunately, eight months later, the spouse passed away. Wow. And so having it. You know, it, it, it was one of those things where it was January and she's like, I got to take care of this. Mm -hmm. And her spouse passed away and, you know, she had it. And if you didn't know who to make those phone calls, I made all the phone calls for her. 
Mm-hmm. And she was like, if I didn't have you, who would do it? Right. So, you know, having a checklist of who to call, um, and then it's not just who to call, it's the names of the banks, the numbers of the banks, the account numbers. So to have all that information is, is really just a blessing to your family as well as so important just so that, you know, it gets taken care of. Right. Well, we're just about out of time here, and I, I want to give you a chance to talk a little bit about your organizing practice, which I'm sure this is part of. And a question I would have is, um, is this a service that you can do um, virtually or remote? Or I mean, you're in the Washington, D.C. Uh, area. Uh, do you just do this in your area, or is this something that can be done remote? It can be done remote. Um, obviously, if I'm doing it remote, you need to find where those documents are in your home. But I can guide you um, you, typically an attorney has copies of it. Right. So if you didn't have the copies here, you could get a, a duplicate copy from your attorney. But um, I could definitely do this remote. I do do it for some people remotely. Uh, and some people just like that hand holding. So locally I do it for a lot of people because they just want someone there to show them the ropes and to hold their hands and to let them know that this is part of the process. Right. And I think it's important, you said earlier, too, you know, we're talking more than just the, you know, the uh, the will and the kinds of things an attorney might put together. There's all those account numbers and just kind of getting them organized. And we referenced, uh, and this will be in our show notes for this episode, too, uh, the downloadable uh, checklist that you have uh, that people can uh, reference as well. Why don't you give out your website and talk about the maybe the other side of your organizing where uh, you're dealing with uh, not end of life issues, but uh, the day to day organizing that we all struggle with sure my website is need another you.com and and I do uh, as you mentioned I'm a certified professional organizer I do physical hands-on residential and small business organizing I also help people go digital and my whole thing is your digital filing cabinet should match your physical filing cabinet because there are times that you want that paper and I am a firm believer that paper is not going anywhere we have more paper than we ever did, right. but we do also have now the option of storing things online so you can carry a tablet or a phone and access all right. that information. So I help people make that mirroring transition of having it anywhere they go. And then I also help people use all those apps and teach them how to, to streamline their processes so that they can be productive while they're just carrying around those tablets and phones all the time with them. Okay, well, let's end this on a big note here. It's Go Month. Just one good, general, uh, motivating, organizing tip for the audience on, uh, you know, it's the beginning of the year. How do we get uh, organized? What's maybe one of the first things to do or one thing they can do to get organized even today? The key thing to do is to set the time to do it. So if you only have a short amount of time, say I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes, and I'm going to do 15 minutes today, and then whatever it is, if it's a pile, if it's a stack, if it's a drawer, if it's just the shoes in your closet, whatever it is, focus on one area rather than looking at a massive project because the 15 minutes will go by before you know it, and you'll put in another 15 minutes, and before you know it, you'll have an area cleaned out. Awesome. Well, this has uh, been a great episode. I think there's a lot of good information. Again, we'll link to the uh, checklist on your website in our show notes. And Kim, we got to ha- have you back on again. Thank you so much, John. All right. Kim Oser, needanotheryou.com, today on Keeping You Organized. Coming up next time on Keeping You Organized. Well, you know, the first issue that I have with resolutions altogether is that people will sit here year long, you know, living their life, living their life, living their life. January 1st hits and they say, oh my God, I have to change everything. And I'm going to set all of these resolutions and suddenly just do everything differently. And that's not how human beings function. 